Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm having a very productive Saturday today, so I thought it'd be fun to kind of vlog it, maybe get you in the spirit to also be productive. I will be packing, organizing, cleaning, doing laundry, getting ready for a trip. So let's quickly sort through these bins, see if there's any like expired toiletries that need to go, see if any of these pouches can be donated or how I can kind of consolidate. Okay, I thought we could maybe just chit chat while I'm going through some of this stuff. So let me tell you about this trip. We are going to Orlando, Florida, which is my hometown. And I'm so excited. I haven't been back home. I've only been back once since my dad's funeral. And it was, the trip that we went back since then was right before we moved to California because we realized we probably wouldn't make it back to Florida very much once we're on the other coast, which was correct. Since we moved to LA, we've never been back. And I'm just so excited to finally go back see all my childhood home, like the places I used to hang out with friends, to see old friends that still live there. I am just so, so excited for this trip. It's a very big deal for me. I feel like I never really realized how much you don't go back home once you lose your parents because that's kind of the anchor that ties you to your hometown. So for me, I just haven't been able to go back. It's hard to prioritize it when it's like, Nobody is specifically inviting you to the holidays or you don't have like a childhood bedroom to stay in or like your parents might help you pay for the trip, you know, stuff like that. So I just haven't been able to like prioritize it and I'm so glad we're finally going. I'm so happy to like be back home. It's going to be amazing. I'm just going through a bunch of duffel bags right now, by the way. I'm trying to decide if any of these would work for this trip. I don't think it would. Isn't this cute? I got this when I went back to Savannah. Every girl deserves a little spoiling. Um, and this is my jumbo sized long champ. And of course it's pink, but this, I don't know. I don't like to check it on airlines. So the reason that we were finally able to like pull the trigger, decide getting back to Orlando is after all these years is a priority that I signed up for a half marathon there. A Disney half marathon, a princess half marathon, a Cinderella themed half marathon. <laughs> My favorite. Um, so that was a really big deal. It was a very much of a bucket list thing for me. And I trained, I started training in like May of 2019 and worked towards it all year. And then in October, my knees started acting up. I've already told you guys this, but the final update is I'm not gonna be able to do the marathon. And it's been heartbreaking because that was just a huge life goal that I had worked really hard towards. We had spent a lot of money for me to sign up for the race and then to book this whole trip around it. It was just crushing, but I did everything my physical therapist said. I was so careful with my training and ultimately my doctor and my physical therapist were both just like, you can't do this. If you do this, even walking that distance, like you could cause permanent damage because I've always had problem knees. And I knew that, but I just kind of thought I could, I don't know. I just had to give it a shot because it was on my dreams, but they said not to. And I thought about ignoring that. <laughs> Obviously not the right choice. Obviously do what, always do what your doctor recommends. And I just realized that ultimately it wasn't worth doing permanent damage for the rest of my life to achieve something for one day. So long story short, I'm not doing the marathon and it ripped my heart out, but I've been doing my best to stay positive and to come to terms with it. And what I've kind of, how I've kind of been accepting it is to think, okay, the marathon, the point of the marathon was to get me on this trip because I clearly needed an excuse to go back to my hometown, which my heart was longing to do. And ever since I lost my parents, I haven't really. And this is the excuse I needed to get out there, find a way to pay for it all because it's not a cheap place to visit and we're doing it. So that's the update on that. <laughs> I don't want to harp on the disappointments because I just want to focus on the positive. I always try to stay from a point of positive, positivity and gratitude. I have so many of these Glossier bags in my packing supplies. And that's what we're gonna do. So we are gonna have an amazing time. We really are. I don't even have to pretend. Like we really are. I'm so excited. I have so many people to see. And I'm gonna vlog it, of course. So that'll be really fun. 
sunscreen. I will need sunscreen in Florida. So it is an eight day trip. The longest trip we have taken since our honeymoon, which was nine years ago. <laughs> and I'm so excited. Like we haven't taken such a long trip in so long, but we booked the, the thing with air miles. And it was like the only days that had the cheap, like 12,000 mile flights. So just kind of had to, but it really worked out because I have so many people to see and things to do. And we're doing Walt Disney World because actually since moving away from Orlando, I've become like a Disney nut. It's kind of funny that I wasn't when I lived there, but I am now. So we are going to spend the first five days with family and seeing friends and all the old sites. And then we're gonna spend three days on property at Walt Disney World, so I'm so excited. And as you can imagine, it's a lot to pack for and organize for. And I wanna be so flawlessly organized that the trip is just nothing but joy because I already set it all up in advance and I don't have to stress about anything. So that's my goal with all these preparations. And now I'm just gonna finish sorting through all these toiletries and narrowing down what I want to take, what I'm not taking this time, but I want to keep, and what I need to toss. The way that I structure this tub of supplies that I go through is I have them separated into Ziploc bags, like these are hair items, shower items, face, body. So that way if I just know like, oh, I want to try that one serum on this trip, I can like grab it out of here, but I just kind of throw travel supplies into these categories in here. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, I do use a lot of Ziploc bags and I know that's not environmentally friendly. I'm sorry, but if it makes you feel better, I've literally had these bags like for years. I never replace them. I just keep reusing them, you know, so I have my like stuff organized into them as if they were permanent bags, but I just kind of like it better because they're totally clear and I can see where everything is and I can easily just relocate all the face items into my suitcase if I want or something like that. And at least, I mean, I'm keeping them out of the landfill because I'm using them, right? I hope. <laughs> so I'm trying. I know um, they're not considered environmentally friendly, but I do try in other ways. And I am reusing and recycling them to the max because I've had the same like box of Ziploc bags in rotation with my packing supplies for so long. So sorry for that caveat, but I just don't want anybody to yell at me. Like, I love the animals. Trust me. I don't eat them or anything. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, for my next project, I'm gonna get some fragrances ready to bring on my trip. And if you've seen some of my other travel videos, you know I like to pick a signature scent for the trip, mostly because scents are just such strong memories. And I know every time I smell it afterward, I'll always remember like the fond memories from that trip. And I just think it's kind of a fun way to create memories. So this is one of my all time favorite perfumes ever, ever, ever. I love it so much, Jo Malone Orange Blossom. Ah, uh, it's just so good. Like for a Florida girl like myself, the smell of orange blossoms. I remember that smell in the air when I was a kid, back when Orlando had a ton of orange groves. And it's almost so sweet, it's sickening when it's in the air like that. <laughs> but in this perfume, it's like the perfect dose of that sweetness. I just absolutely love it. And then I've been saving this orange blossom body cream for like a special occasion. So I thought I would bring the rest of my body cream and some perfume on this trip. And that way it'll be like very Florida themed. I'm so excited. So I'm going to bring the perfume in a little travel bottle. I've shown before these travel perfume bottles I use. Like I like to decant um, rollerball perfumes into these and other things like that just to make it easier for me to take on trips or to throw in my purse or whatever. And it just take, comes with this little funnel. So let's start with that. So there's one travel bottle filled up. I think I'm gonna go ahead and fill up two because I really don't want to feel like I have to ration my perfume on the trip. Like I want to smell as good as I want to smell. <laughs> and I don't know if this is completely insane, but I had a thought to maybe bring my lotion in a bag because this jar is so heavy and like nice glass high quality by Jo Malone. So I obviously don't want to travel with that. But the travel containers I've seen are really small and I actually probably will go through the majority of the rest of this jar um, on this trip. Ooh, 
bonus. I got some extra hand lotion to put on. It smells so heavenly in here now, of course. And I got a bag of lotion. So I realized that that is super weird and possibly gross, but I think that's gonna work really well for my massive amount of lotion that I go through. And I'm just gonna get a little spatula to scoop the rest in. And I'm done. I have all my fragrances for the trip and I will have to report back as to whether this is the best or worst idea I've ever had. Um, but it's kind of satisfying, this bag o lotion. And it's obviously way more space efficient that this is all I'm bringing, like really low profile, as opposed to these beautiful bottles and jars. Status update, I'm slowly switching to the actual laundry and packing of clothes. Luckily I have my outfits all planned out. I had a hair appointment earlier this week and then when I was like just stranded in the hair chair for a couple hours, I wrote out our outfits for this whole trip. And I feel like that's a huge gift to myself, from myself, that I don't have to think about what to wear for eight whole days. That's going to be amazing. <laughs> so um, you'll see in a second, it's very, full Charlotte, if we can say that. Because I have an old Florida, vintage Florida theme for this trip. I love, I've always loved like retro Florida, like the orange groves and the flamingos and like animal print, palm print, pinks and greens. I'll show you. Um, so that's the inspiration. And I'm now going to iron this whole basket of laundry. Even though it'll get wrinkled in the suitcase, I just feel like if you start wrinkle-free, that helps. <laughs> and then I'm bringing my trusty travel steamer, so I'll show you that. But yeah, I'm gonna iron right now, and I actually kinda like ironing. I find it very satisfying, because it's one of the few things you do, and you see the results instantly, and it's like very satisfying. And also, I'm going to watch a movie while I iron, so that makes it more fun, too. Today happens to be the 70th anniversary of Cinderella. My girl. Gonna be going to visit her in Orlando. So I'm going to watch this. Sorry for looking absolutely terrifying. This face mask. It's blue, but it kind of soaks into your skin as you use it, so thus the look. But I really like it. I showed you it's that Arnica relief mask, and I keep it in my fridge. So nice and cold and refreshing in the morning, and I have my coffee. When I drink coffee with a face mask, which is always, or tea, I use a stainless steel straw, and obviously you have to be careful not to burn yourself, but that way you can just kind of sip it. <laughs> so I'm going to start the morning like I always do with some journaling. I've talked about this in a million other videos, but one thing special that I like to do before a trip is journal about the trip specifically and kind of talk about how I want it to go, how I picture it, how I visualize spending our days on the trip, like what time I picture myself waking up, what time I picture myself going to bed, how I want to feel, how, what I want to do, you know, things like that. And I find it really helps to kind of visualize it in advance and know going into it how you want to feel. Like if you want to feel calm and relaxed, you can't go into it hectic still from leaving town. <laughs> you have to go into it calm and relaxed. And so I find that journaling helps me pinpoint my goals for my trip and just specifically like how I want to feel like, is this a restful vacation? Is this an energetic go and do everything vacation? And just kind of picture it in advance. And then I find in the moment when it's like, oh, I should stay up till 2 a.m. I can kind of remember, no, I visualize like getting to bed a little earlier on this trip. I visualize like catching up on rest or whatever it might be. So just gonna take a moment to do some journaling and sip my coffee. Can we like legitimately talk while I have this face mask on or is it too weird? I don't know. But I was just gonna add about the journaling that um, for an example that came up, like when I was in college, I went to New York City with my best friend. And there was this moment when we got lost. We were in the rain, 
pouring rain, dragging our suitcases, walking through New York City, a couple of college kids like didn't know anything and like arguing and fighting over directions. This was before iPhones with maps, guys. Like we were lost. Couldn't get a cab and it was like awful. And then we wound up at this great brunch place with like bottomless mimosas and we had such a fun brunch. And long story short, we always remember that and we always talk about it. And we always say every trip has that moment when you're like lost in the rain. We call it the lost in the rain moment. And part of the importance I think of like journaling in advance is it prepares you for the fact you're going to have that lost in the rain moment. And when it comes, like don't freak out, just have fun, enjoy yourself. Like if I had done the journaling exercise before that New York trip, I would have written down that my goal was to make lifelong memories with my best friend. And so when I got lost in the rain, I would have known we were doing that <laughs> because now we're in our 30s and we still talk about that. So when you know in advance, like my goal for this trip is just to enjoy being with the people I love or to make memories or whatever it is, maybe even just to have some quality me time with yourself. Whenever something comes up, you can see, you can like reframe it and see how it serves the goal for the trip. Like. Even if you're having a bad day, it's gonna be a memory you'll never forget and stuff like that. So that's why I like to kind of go into trips like with a clear head about what my goals are and how I wanna feel and how I just wanna soak up the moment, soak up being with whoever I'm with, soak up a chance to relax and refresh yourself or whatever. And I really appreciate you guys listening to that whole thing with this crazy face mask on me. So you're the real troopers. <laughs> I feel so excited for this trip, so grateful for this trip, even though, like I told you, a lot of the circumstances weren't how I would wish they could be. And I'm so bummed that I'm not doing the half marathon still, but I think it's really good to journal through feelings and just process these things instead of bury them and then, you know, wind up having a crappy trip and not even really realizing why, you know? So it was really good. I kind of came to the conclusion that the point of this trip is to relive old memories and make new memories. And I just thought that was kind of fun and also to spend some time with old friends and acquaintances and family and hopefully make new friends too. So it's gonna be really fun. And I'm excited and I have a full day of packing. One of the first steps that I do is start compiling the clothes kind of just in a row and it really helps me get a visual sense of my color palette for the trip. I know not everybody cares about stuff like that, that's totally cool, but for me, I just feel more special when I have a theme. So, as you can see, I've kind of got like pink, greens, natural prints, some orange, and it helps me see at a glance, like, not that every outfit has to match other days, but it helps me know things are gonna like mix and match better. So I'm just kind of playing with the color palette right now, and then I'm gonna put the actual outfits together. But I've kind of laid out the outfits for each day, and, compiled everything. I put like a drop sheet down that's like a drop cloth so I could put shoes on the bed, by the way. I don't really have shoes on my bed. Um, and yeah, this is making me so happy. <laughs> I have like my outfit, Nate's outfit, my outfit, Nate's outfit, my outfit, Nate's outfit, and um, for each day so that I could kind of see that we're going to coordinate because I'm honestly so excited to like coordinate with him every day of this trip. So in this process, I completely tried on every outfit, even if it was something I've worn before, because I just want to make sure the fit was right and the accessories would work and everything. And I'm glad I did that because I realized this dress really needs like belt loops. So it's a little bit big on me and the belt fits. So therefore like there's a conflict there. So I think I'm going to try and put stitch on, just hand sew some belt loops onto the dress. I also laid out my accessories so I could kind of see that they're gonna work with each outfit, I can interchange them, but basically I'm doing like rattan. I thought this purse would be really easy to pack because it squishes. So I can use that for my day purse and the jewelry kind of coordinates with that. As you can see, I've slowly just taken over every surface in my apartment for the purpose of packing. But it's all gonna come together and the house is gonna be clean once this is all organized. But basically I'm trying to figure out what I wanna have in my daily carry purse on this trip, what I'm going to want to have in my Disney bag for the Disney days, and what I'm going to want to have in my carry-on for the flight. So I'm just going to transfer everything into each of these bags, figure out what fits and everything, and pack it up. 
Okay, I kind of tested the situation out. This is the purse I'm going to be carrying mostly on a daily basis. So even though I'm not going to fly with this purse, I just want to make sure things would fit. And I have, this is going to be my wallet for the trip. It's just a pink passport cover and I put a Pan Am sticker. Isn't that cute? Um, I don't even need my passport for this trip, obviously, but I thought I could put my plane tickets here, cash back here, and just any emergency cards we might need. And, I ha and it has a space for a pen too, which is nice. This is from Amazon. Um, so I thought that'd be better than bringing my giant wallet that I usually have. I have my glasses. This case is from Michael's, or no, Joanne, the Simplicity Vintage line. So cute. So those are sunglasses. And then I've also just got my usual essentials like lip balm, hand sanitizer, tissues, lotion, gum, and a hanky. Sweet hanky. <laughs> I love carrying a hanky now. Um, so that's just to make sure my daily stuff is going to fit. But for the actual flight, I will put it in the carry-on bag. But then I was also just testing to make sure everything would fit when we go to Disney. So like on the Disney days, I'm going to have everything I just showed you plus a jacket. This one's by Uniqlo and it just really squishes nicely. It's awesome to travel with. So I can just squish that down. It like barely takes up any room. And I have a poncho. It's Orlando. It's definitely going to rain. Sunscreen. And these things I won't really need until we get to Disney probably. So I can just leave these in the Disney bag. Bringing some pins to trade pins at Disney. Um, just a little travel hairbrush. That probably will come in handy on the trip. Extra hand sanitizer, extra tissues. So that's the Disney stuff, and then everything else I'm just gonna try and fit into my carry-on for the actual flight. And I have my emergency bag. If you've seen my What's in My Bag videos, I always have like basically anything anyone could possibly need, and I ramp it up a little bit when I'm traveling. And then I also am hoping to fit in here some crafting. I'm so excited to do some crafting on this trip. I've been loving crafting. Um, I'm hoping to do a crafting vlog with you guys after this, but I have my knitting. I'm just working on a washcloth So it's like really simple to take and then this is an embroidery kit. I have some Towels that I want to embroider the hoop to hold it in place I have two more towels that I put the stencil on in case I have time to do three whole towels on this trip and a few colors of thread Isn't this kind of cute a little keychain of thread here? And this is a little sewing kit that was actually my mom's, so it's really cute. She did that embroidery. So as you can see, I learned it from her, and I love doing it because it reminds me of her. And I'm not sure if TSA is gonna allow this or not. It says on the TSA website, as long as it's four inches or under, you can bring scissors. They're not sharp, but kind of nervous they're gonna take those away. If they do take them away, I have nail clippers that I could use to clip the thread. These are brand new, they've never been on nails, just in case anybody thinks that's gross. <laughs> and I have needles and thread and like buttons, just in case I have to repair anything on the trip if somebody loses a button, I don't know. Always good to travel with a sewing kit. And that way on the plane, I can like do some crafting. I think that'd be so nice because usually I have my laptop and I'm working and I've made a bold decision to not bring my laptop on this trip. So we can talk about that because it's a really crazy decision for me. But hopefully all my crafting supplies I want to bring will fit. And then lastly, I have a book I want to bring to read, The Alchemist. I've been meaning to reread this for a long time and I thought this would be a great opportunity because this, the themes in this I think resonate with going back to my hometown. And then Nate and I always talk about our hopes and dreams on trips. That was kind of like our cute little phrase for it. And then I found this notebook. So now we really write down our hopes and our dreams <laughs> in this notebook. And I just feel like a trip is almost like a little mini new year. Like you get a fresh start. So there's that. We also like to journal our trips in here. So we have like the last few trips we've taken journal entries from those. And that way we can reread all of our travels at one place. And then these are the two journals I like to use every day. I'm a big journaler, as we know. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit all of these things. But let's just see how it goes. I preach a lot of self-care on this channel, but I'm also extremely busy. So this year I'm working on making more space for these things. That's why I'm bringing them on this trip. And by the way, this pouch is from Glossier. All these pouches are from Glossier. This one came with a skincare set from Glow. Like that watermelon sleeping mask thing. I don't know, but I just thought it was so cute for knitting. So yeah, I decided not to pack my laptop for this trip. 
because it's heavy and then you need the chargers and then you have to take it out at security and it's really a whole thing. And that made me realize I don't think I've taken a trip without my laptop since my honeymoon. Like I have worked on every trip we've taken. Not like I'm working like 40 hour weeks, but just always having my laptop, working on the airplane, maybe have a deadline or two that I have to meet while we're there, like something to write or edit. And I just, I couldn't believe that when I realized I haven't taken a trip, I got, meaning I haven't taken a vacation without my laptops in like nine years. And like I said, I'm on here preaching to you guys constantly about self care. <laughs> That ain't gonna do, Charlotte. You gotta do better than that. Like, I feel so liberated at the thought of not bringing my laptop. I've worked really hard to wrap up work for this trip so that I can take the time off and I'm gonna put in a, a full, I still have a full work day tomorrow to wrap up everything that could possibly come up. And then if there really, really is an emergency, like if somebody has an, a problem with their order from my store or something, Nate's bringing his laptop, <laughs> so I can use his. So it's not that dramatic, but. He wants to bring his in case he has any time to write like for fun on passion projects but for me it's like since i write full time i don't really want to write on vacation even though it'd be great to write like a novel or something really fun like that i just feel like i need a break from digital stuff as much as possible but i am gonna get this video edited and scheduled to go up while we're gone so like my channel will be covered you guys won't be bored waiting for me <laughs> and I'm just gonna try and wrap up all those loose ends so that I don't have to bring my laptop. Ah, I feel like a kid again, I'm so free. <sighs> okay, so I need to make sure that this will all fit. I'm bringing my long chomp for my carry-on. I think these are the perfect carry-on bag because these they fit a ton. That beautiful white interior and it opens wide, it's just so easy to find things. But I also love that it zips all the way shut. Like my Neverfull, it just has that one closure and I feel like things can fall out. Plus I don't really like to put that on the ground. This one can take a beating. In fact, it needs to be washed, but I figure I might as well just do that after this trip because it's going to be on the floor of like airplanes and stuff. And the other thing that's great about these, of course, is that it folds down to like nothing if, I mean, let's be real. I'm going to come back with more stuff than I'm bringing probably because <laughs> we're going to shop. But um, it's nice to have the portability. So this will be my carry-on. If I can fit all my crafts, I'm going to be like a crazy craft lady on the plane, just whipping out my knitting and my embroidery, my journals and my book. I'm so excited. I have Nate's toiletries, by far the easiest packing job ever. He's obviously capable of packing for himself, by the way, but I just prefer to do it because I like to be super organized like a freak obviously and he indulges me but his stuff is so simple so he's ready to go and then I was kind of proud of myself that this was my toiletry case it's so perfect for this trip with the citrus on it it just looks very Florida and I put all of my facial skincare in here so I mostly have smaller sizes of my favorites plus a few travel size products I've been saving for this and some face masks of course I have my perfumes that I decanted, a little deodorant, and my bag of lotion back here. I'm a little nervous, but I like double bagged it. Hopefully that's gonna be okay. Q-tips, eye drops, cotton pads, and then up here is like our dental stuff, toothbrushes and floss and whatnot. So toiletries are done, and everything was travel versions of my usual stuff. So even though we don't actually leave until the day after tomorrow, I'm so early. Um, that's all ready to go and I can live without anything that's in there. And then I also have a separate bag of hair supplies. I need to add like my curling iron once I'm done with that before the trip and a separate bag of shower supplies just to keep those easy to grab whenever I need those. And then these are gifts that we're bringing. So I'm going to have to figure out how much room I have for all of this stuff. Also, Nate just yelled in from the other room that the good thing about packing gifts is that leaves room for buying stuff. And I'm excited he said that. Woo, shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, babe? Disney. Mm-hmm. This has my jewelry for the trip, which is very pared down. And it's kind of delicate because it has two hair flowers in there, but some watch bands some bracelets and other jewelry that matches my theme, my old vintage Florida theme. 
And then all of these things are for the bedside table. And I always pack like a bedside table bag so that I can, once we get to wherever we're going, just drop this next to the bed and be done. So I always bring this in case the hotel or the friend's house or whatever doesn't have enough chargers or outlets for chargers. And then I love these from Ikea that they can charge up to three phones at a time. So this one, these two have all of our phone chargers, Apple Watch, every charger we need. Then I also always go ahead and portion out our vitamins for the trip. If you're already familiar with me, you're already familiar with this level of crazy. But I really find it so convenient to travel with it this way. It's just in little mini bags and they have the date on them. So we can tell, you know, if you forgot to take your vitamins and you're like, I don't know if I took it or not. So I have Nate's and mine separated here. Also extra emergency and then some like little beauty goodies I like to have by my bedside table. When I pack shoes, I like to put them in an old shower cap and that keeps the soles of the shoes from getting on anything else in the suitcase. And now to the star of the show, which is the clothing. And I asked Nate, I showed him this pile here and I asked if that looked like an unreasonable amount of clothes for two people for eight days and he said no. So I was so happy and proud. Maybe not everyone will agree, but he's also kind of used to how overboard I can sometimes go. And I really think this packing method helps me not overpack because if you haven't seen my other packing videos, basically what I do is put a whole day. <sighs> I know I seem so crazy when I show you guys things like this, but I also know if your brain works like mine, then you're gonna just really love this idea. So I put a whole day's outfit in one of these jumbo Ziploc bags and it has my whole outfit like down to unmentionables and accessories and everything. And then it also has Nate's coordinating shirt for each day. And then if there's something that I plan to re-wear later in the week, I put a note so I can remember at the end of the day, like unless something happened and the jeans need to be washed. but move them and I named all of my outfits for this trip so that way it makes it easier to find the outfit that I'm looking for and that's my system I go more in depth in this in the other packing video if you want to check that out but basically this is very space efficient because I just put this like this is two pairs of jeans and when I first put them in this bag the bag was like out to here and then I, you know, leave just a little pocket and it's not glamorous, but I just sit on it and let all the air go out and then zip it. And it really creates a little vacuum seal. And I think this stack of clothes could be a lot huger if I didn't do that. And I do know they make packing cubes and packing envelopes and vacuum seal things and high tech stuff and all these things that you can pay money for. But honestly, I bought this box of Ziploc bags for like $3 and it will serve me for like a hundred trips or more. And then I will definitely recycle them eventually when they're just tattered, but I get so much use out of my Ziploc bags and it's so easy to see cause they're clear and I can just write on them. So this is my preferred way of packing. I know it's not for everybody, but I love it. <laughs> so all the bags of clothes fit in the suitcase. I might have to sit on it, but it will zip, I think. <laughs> And the reason I like to pack that way is specifically on trips where I know I won't be able to like unpack, like if we're staying with numerous people, numerous different hotels, etc., bouncing around. That just makes it so easy so you're not like living out of your suitcase, rooting through, looking for like jeans here, shirt there, everything. It's just like, boop, that's all I need for today. Okay, I'm officially pooped. <laughs> it's like 10 p.m. Sunday night. I just checked my watch and I got 20,000 steps today just in our little apartment. Like I did not leave. But I got so much done. I feel so... I did walk the dogs a couple times, but not far enough to like get 20,000 steps. And now, this is amazing. I have a whole day tomorrow before the trip to get, you know, the rest of my life together. I have all the packing pretty much completely done. I have a little list of like just last minute things. But that way I have all day tomorrow to be thinking of something I might have forgotten. Instead of thinking it once, thinking of it once I'm on the airplane. So I'm off to bed. Good night. Good morning. It's Monday morning finally. It's gonna be another long day. I'm gonna vlog as long as I can up to the bitter end when I have to edit this. So you can come with me again today. And it's just gonna start with some chores. There's not like a ton to do, but I just want to make sure I'm leaving a clean house to come home to. It's the best feeling. 
And I have to say being packed a day in advance is the best feeling. I really can't believe I don't usually do this because I'm like so freakishly organized, but I think the fact that I am freakishly organized is why I don't usually succeed in this because it takes me so much longer to pack than normal people. But as you've seen, my system is quite intense. But it does give me a lot of peace of mind, which is to me what's it's all worth it, just to feel on a trip that peace of mind that like I have everything and it's like I know where it is in my suitcase and I can be calm and enjoy the trip and be present and not be distracted with like, what am I gonna wear? Did I bring a undershirt for Nate's dress shirt? I don't know, just stuff like that. I'm gonna miss you, baby girl. You're a good girl. You have fun in summer camp? Yeah. I'm gonna miss you, DC. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. You're a good boy. Hope you have fun with all the other doggies. Oh, I hate dropping them off. It makes me so sad. Hi again. <laughs> I'm in my robe because I was cold. I'm still working. It's like 5.39 p.m. now. I got, so I got like that chores and cleaning around the house done this morning. I did work. My lunch break, I took the doggies to drop off. It was so sad. I hate saying bye to them. But I'm sure they're gonna have a fun week at summer camp. <laughs> Um, and then I cheered myself up with a mani. You see? I'll put the, I can't remember the name of the color right now, so I'll put it in the description box. But I thought it was like the perfect peachy coral for Florida. And I've been working ever since. And I'd love to say I'm done with work, seeing as it's after five, but I'm not, because I'm just like, like I said, really, 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 really trying to wrap everything up. Tonight, it's so weird because Nate is at his writing group. The dogs are gone at daycare. So I'm the only living creature in the apartment and it's so weird. <laughs> I'm sure this is how like moms feel probably when like the kids and the partner and everybody are gone, but it's just, it's so weird to be the only person creature here. But I thought I'd take advantage of in true mom fashion, I thought I'd take advantage of it and vacuum and mop with no one here to ruin my floors. <laughs> you know, like the perfect vacuum lines are so satisfying and then inevitably it gets like little adorable little paw prints on it like snow. So I'm going to do the floors tonight so we come home to a really clean house and um, the last big thing is going to be editing this vlog. Well, it's 8, 10 p.m. now, <laughs> but I finished work. I finished everything. Watch this. Watch this. Boom. I'm so happy. I have to open that back up and edit this vlog. Duh. <laughs> I was about to say you witnessed a, a big moment there, but you did because the work work is done. I'm just determined to stay up and edit this vlog tonight, but uh, I can't believe it's already after eight. It's like you try and you try and you try to get ahead in life and everything just always takes more time than one would think. So I've come to the harsh realization that I really need to end this vlog and get on with editing it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me to prepare for this trip. I realize that the way I pack and plan is way, way, way too much for the absolute majority of people and I'm okay with that. Hopefully you're okay with that. And it's entertaining if nothing else, but maybe you got some good ideas. Maybe you just enjoy the company while you're also doing similar type of productive things. I don't know, but I'm just glad you're here. Love talking to you guys in the comments and hearing from you. I would love it if you hit subscribe and join our wonderful family. I just, I'm so happy to be here with you guys. And stay tuned for the very next vlog because like as soon as I finish filming this tonight, I'm gonna start filming the next one tomorrow morning. And I'm gonna take you guys with me to Orlando. My nostalgic childhood, everything. I can't wait. So I hope to see you then. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you later. Bye guys. Good night. <laughs>